Shabbat Shalom and Lishana Tova to everyone. That means Happy New Year. Lishana Tova. Greet each other with Lishana Tova. It's not that hard to remember. I'm not asking you to do that full big one. <laughs> well, we're here on Rosh Hashanah and it's also Shabbat. And uh, this is a really amazing time because there's so much going on in the world. And uh, what's wrong, Josh? Just making sure it's straight. Okay. Um, for all you out there in Facebook land, uh, or on Facebook Live, that later will be changed to a YouTube. Uh, if you want a copy of the notes, contact me at kolharuach at gmail.com. That's K O L. H A R U A C H at gmail dot com. Um, we're called Haruah, Messianic Fellowship, which means voice of the spirit. And boy, there's a lot of voice going for. That shofar is blasting today. I love it. You need to keep blowing the shofar. It's the sound of the watchman. It's the sound of the prophet. Today is the day that Yeshua will come to get his bride. One of these years, very soon. And for all of you out there who say no man knows the day or the hour, you're greatly misunderstanding that, but that's okay. Because I have videos to tackle that and we're gonna have some future teachings to tackle that, okay? Uh, but anyhow, we do know the day is cold. We might not know the year because it's been lost to us, but we do know the day. We know he's coming on a Rosh Hashanah to get his bride, and we will be with him forever. So, that is something to look forward to, don't you think? Okay, the teaching that I have on today, Yom Teru, which means the day of the awakening bless. That's another term for Rosh Hashanah, because we have two Rosh Hashanahs. So we have to identify which one. Rosh Hashanah, on the month of Aviv, the month of Passover, there's a Rosh Hashanah then too. The first day is the new moon of the month of Aviv. But we're today on the other new year, okay. Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah, the day of the awakening blast. Josh, first Josh, I think it's somewhere else. That's right. Uh, so I wanted to sound just the Teruah, just the Teruah. Uh, oh, there, here he comes. Josh, will you do me a favor and just sound the Teruah? Yeah. Just the Teruah. And sound it like as long, the breaking up as long as possible. Because it's this sound that's going to cause the dead to awake when God, when Messiah, the archangel of God blow the shofar and the dead of Messiah will rise and we who are alive will be changed. It's gonna be this sound, so you get to know this sound. Amen. After uh, top page two, after the resurrection of the dead believers, there is a change coming to the called out or chosen born again people of God. We are still alive. If we are still alive, the dead and Messiah are gonna rise first. And if we're still alive because they haven't killed us, I'm sorry for all you pre-trippers out there. I personally don't believe that anymore. We're not gonna like you know, go away and then leave the, the world to, you know, for, for all this, there's nothing in the scriptures to support it so far, for what I've studied. And you have to study for yourself, by the way. You can't just accept what something, something that has been taught 100 years ago, or 200 years ago, or even 800 years ago. Study for yourself. Okay, so after the dead in Messiah rise, there's a change coming. For all of us who are still alive, we made it through. The, the false Messiah hadn't killed us. Or maybe we're in a place where the false Messiah couldn't get to. Okay, so we're still alive. So what happens? 
Messiah comes first for the dead, and then we are changed, we're transformed, and we go to the wedding chambers. I'm gonna, we'll go over Isaiah 26 in a, in a moment, okay? He will then pour out his wrath on the earth, which will be left with wicked, unrepentant sinners. However, if some reason somebody doesn't take the mark, and they're here when God pours out his fire on the earth. And at the last moment, right before they're about to be burned alive, in the, in the day of the Lord's, or his wrath, they repent and they turn their lives over. They'll make it through as if through fire. That's what it says. There'll be some even saved at that moment as if through fire. God's merciful. Is it even to the very last moment, even in the fire, he's merciful. He's merciful. Amen. Okay, so what is change? I'm not talking about the change in our lives for the better. I'm talking about the change at the end. What is it? The word is Khalifa and has nothing to do with that Arab word. Okay. But the word is Khalifa. It means a change, a change of garments, a replacement, a change of raiment. Its root word, Khalaf, means to pass on or away, to pass through to change. In other words, one thing was here and now it's gone and something else is here. You can come in. You can come in. Okay, make sure you grab a teacher there on the left. Hi, Aurora. Okay. <laughs> grab a book? A teacher and a book. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Genesis 41, 14, I have it in your notes. You have all the scriptures in your notes. Pharaoh sent and called Yosef. Now this is the story of Yosef in the book of Genesis, okay? Remember Joseph? You know, the multicolored uh, garment. Oh, careful, careful of that little, little platform there, okay? Okay, so. Pharaoh said and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon, and he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. Remember? Remember? He was in prison, and the Pharaoh had a dream. And the dream was about 14 years of events. The first seven years were going to be seven years of plenty, and the next seven years were going to be seven years of famine. So, seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, okay? So, um, so right before that, he didn't know what it meant. This is before they figured out that it meant seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. So, Pharaoh's tormented, and if there's no one that can translate what it means, he had this dream, okay? So, Joseph is brought out because one of the people that served the Pharaoh remembered how Joseph helped him when he had a dream when he was in prison, okay? So what did they do? They brought him out, he shaved, they changed his clothing, and he came to Pharaoh. It's a picture of the resurrection. We go from being at the bottom, the lowest point, to the highest point, okay? So that's, that's the resurrection, and that's the change. That's the transformation. He changed his clothing. Well, what? Clothing is going to get changed on us. This. It's going to be gone. It's going to be a whole new flesh. A whole new, and I don't really call it flesh. It's going to be something other than that. A whole new covering. A resurrected body. A new body. Okay, look at what it says in Job chapter 14. 12 to 15. So man lies down and does not rise till the heavens are no more. They will not awake nor be roused from their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in the grave, that you would consume me until your wrath is past. Is that's up right here? Again, it's always this concept about being concealed until he pours out his wrath. 
that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait till my change comes. He was looking forward to his resurrection or even his change. You shall call and I will answer you. You shall desire the work of your hands. Another, this is a Greek word. You all know this word, metamorphosis. In Hebrew, I'm sorry, in Greek, the word is metamorpho. It means to change to another form, to transfer, to, to transfigure. Remember when Messiah changed, he was transfigured? Okay, so metamorphosize, change. It's like, a, it's like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. I believe that's what God is doing with many of us. In a smaller way, not a physical, large way, like this is going to happen. But he's preparing us. And many of us are going to come out of our cocoons as a new creation. And what I mean is what God is about to do in the earth through his people. To the page 3, Mark 9, 1 to 4. He said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that there is something standing here. There are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with power. Now, after six days, we're just talking about the transfiguration. Yeshua took Peter, James, and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow. There was no longer on earth that could white them. And Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Yeshua. Another word in Greek for change is alasso. It means to change, to exchange one thing for another, to transform. That's the word used in this passage that we just read. He transfigured. He became something else. Now, Peter, James, and John were still very much in the flesh. So they thought, is this now the moment you're going to be king? Because they saw something different. They saw the future when he is king, when Messiah is king. But they didn't understand that it wasn't yet. He was doing this, and, and then God spoke out loud in a voice and said, Listen to my son. Listen to I am well pleased with him. I'm not quoting that exactly perfectly. But I am well pleased with him. Listen to him. It's not time yet. Huh? Listen to my son in whom I am well pleased. Thank you. Listen to my son in whom I am well pleased. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last shofar. For the shofar will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So he says, first there, he says, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible has put on incorruption and the mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is a condemnation of the word, of the law. But be thanks to God, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Therefore, my beloved, Brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is what our hope is. Our hope is for our change. Our hope is for our transformation. Guess what? That blood that is applied to your heart through believing in, in Yeshua, Yeshua's DNA, the, the DNA of transformation is already in you. Through the Holy Spirit, it's already working in you. That's why you shine for Him. We shine for Him because the DNA is already at work. But one day, we're going to get to the point where we shine so bright that people are going to have to say, Oh, you shine so bright. <laughs> and they're going to want to know the reason for our shining. Okay. <laughs> I would say they'll be blinded, but they will. we will be bright. And then we're going to change. Okay. It's like Christina used to say all the time, it's like popcorn. 
First you have that little kernel of corn, and when you apply some heat, boom, it comes this whole other thing. And that's what's gonna happen to us. And you could say that the fire will be the, the glory of God that transforms us. So the resurrection of the barley believers and the harvest in the first resurrection, bottom of page three. See, when Yeshua, when Yeshua went to, uh, after he went to the cross and he resurrected, he wasn't the only one that resurrected. Now, on the, the day of his resurrection, there was another celebration. It was called the Bikarim, the first fruits. And what was it the first fruits of? The first fruits of the barley harvest. So Yeshua was the first fruits of the barley harvest and everybody who raised with him. And I'll, I'll tell you this much in, in confidence, it's my opinion, based on the scriptures, that every righteous believer up to the other man that was on that cross with him that repented, that were on one of the other crosses with him, were all resurrected on, on the day that he was resurrected as first fruits of the barley harvest. That means all righteous up to that point in Abraham's bosom were were raised. But every person that died from that point on is waiting for their resurrection. Even though their spirit goes to be with the Lord, they have a body that's waiting their resurrection. Okay, so it's the barley harvest. Okay, first resurrection. Matthew 27, 51 to 53. Behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. This is at Yeshua's resurrection. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Can you imagine? You're, you're, you're there, and uh, this is after the fest, after the, the Passover, after unleavened bread, the first day. And you're gathered together, you might be sharing some matzah with somebody. And, and here appears Abraham. Abraham, what are you doing here? I, I thought you were gone. It's Abraham has come to visit with us. And he says, I'm here to tell you, repent and turn. Messiah has died for you. Your Lord gave everything for you. And then you have over maybe about three or four houses down, Elijah is visiting somebody. And maybe in another city, Moses is visiting somebody. Can you imagine? what that was like, but they were all seen, okay? They were changed. They weren't like they were before. They had a brand new body. Supernatural. Yeah. When they when the resurrection of the dead comes, it's not for them. They've already had theirs. They're going to come with all the believers back on your before, but we are going to have ours. <clears throat> Acts 1, 1 to 3. The former account I made, we're on page four. The former account I made, O Theophilus, that all of all that Yeshua began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive, after his suffering many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, 4 to 8. And, and after, and that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. And after that he was seen by 500 people at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some had fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, and then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. Now, I want to share something with you that you may have not heard before. But there's patterns in the scriptures. This happened before, and guess what? It's going to happen again. Just as <clears throat> at the resurrection of Yeshua, as first fruits, then they were going all around for a period of time, probably 40 days. We're going to have a period of time after the resurrection of the dead, and then the change of the believers. Now you might think, well, it says, don't we go immediately to be with the Lord? It says in the scriptures. See, immediately to the Lord doesn't 
you know, we know a day is a thousand years, right? <laughs> Immediately might not be like the moment. It might actually be a week or two or three. But before we go up, or before we go up, we're going to be in glory. And the scriptures support this. Okay? We're going to enter, we're going to go around, witness the people in a glorified body. The dead also will rise. People like Martin Luther and, or all the other people uh, that were great people, believers of God, they're going to all rise up and be witnessing everywhere about the coming of the kingdom of Messiah is about to come. And they're going to, you know, they're going to go to like the Catholic clergy and all these other people. And they're going to say, you better not follow this false Messiah anymore. God is about to pour out his wrath on the earth. Repent. Okay, but they're going to maybe be some of those that go into fire. Okay, to give their lives to the Lord through the fire, the last chance. Okay, so there's going to be a great witness at the end. Okay, and, and that's, that's going to be all of us because it happened before. Now, you want the proof of that? I don't think I had that scripture in here, but I will show you. It's Isaiah 60 that Maria wrote that song to. Okay. Maybe we could do an acapella version of it before we're done. Okay, Isaiah 60. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and, and deep darkness the peoples. But Jehovah will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Now get this. And nations will come to your light, and kings. Now look at this word. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Kings, people will come to the brightness of your rising. You see what I mean? It's clearly said here. People will be drawn to your rising up. It's coming. The glory will increase and increase. We will have the glory. And then we, when the time comes for him to take us, then that will be it. We can't stay on the earth any longer. It will longer. We'll burn up everybody around us. <laughs> we'll, be up, we'll be up with the Lord. Okay. So, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 23. But now Messiah is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Messiah also be made alive. But each one in his own order, Messiah the first fruits after, the, after those, uh, I'm sorry, afterward, those who are Messiahs at his coming. Yeshua appeared to many people during his 40 days after his resurrection and were resurrected with him. This is the, every righteous of the dead from Adam to the repentant man on the other cross. Yeshua said to him today, you will be with me in paradise. That's what he told the other man on the cross in Luke 23, 41 to 43. They were the beakerine, symbolic of the barley harvest. This was the witness to the living that were saved, becoming believers through a glory witness. There has to be a final glory witness. Okay, now, it says here, let's see, let's look at the bottom of page four. John 5, 28, 29. Do not marvel this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and at the end, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. That's in John 5, 28, 29, in the words of Yeshua. Okay, now let me share something a little bit about harvests. Okay, there's a bunch of harvests. It starts with the barley. Okay, you remember the first fruits of the barley. Do you know that, that Shavuot, the day when the Torah was given on Mount Sinai, and the day when the Holy Spirit was given to the believers in the book of Acts, is another harvest. It's called the wheat harvest. It's called the beaker reap or the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Well, that wasn't yet going to be the resurrection. The first fruits were the souls that were being won. It's the first fruits. 
That happened in the book of Acts. First fruits of the wheat harvest. Guess who we are? We're not barley. Yeshua was barley, and all who resurrected with him were barley. We are wheat. Okay? We are wheat. So if you brought some wheat bread, we're going to do Tosh Leaf in a little bit. Okay? Uh, but it's like, no, you, don't, you can use barley if you want. But I'm just saying that we are wheat because we're going to be the wheat harvest. What happens in the fall? It's the wheat harvest. Okay? These, Yeshua is coming for his bride. It will be in the fall, the wheat harvest. All the harvests together count as one harvest. Did you know that? The harvest season that begins with barley and ends with wheat, with the final wheat harvest and the final fruit and all that, it all counts as one harvest. Yeshua was the first fruits of all the resurrections. Amen. All of them, even to the very end, even the two witnesses that rise up in the book of Revelation. They're all included with that harvest. All those harvests. There's going to be multitudes of resurrections during the book of Re Revelation. We can see it. There's going to be multitudes. And this all counts as the harvest. Okay, what a harvest. But ultimately, at the end, the big one, the resurrection of the dead. Okay. Now, it might be that the resurrection of the two witnesses is going to be right before the resurrection of the dead that will occur at Rosh Hashanah. All right. And then again, maybe their resurrection is at Rosh Hashanah with us, all of us. So when they rise, so will all of us. You never know. There's, there's a lot of unknowns here about when. We know it's going to be on Rosh Hashanah, we just don't know what year. Okay, could it be at the end? Of the Great Tribulation? Could it be a year before the end? Could it be two years before the end? Or three years before the end? But we know that there's going to be a witness in glory for a season. Maybe even during the time of the false messiah. Okay, so, but we're not going to actually go to the wedding until the end. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing. But. Okay, there's going to be multitudes of resurrection, but think of it as harvest. Instead of just resurrection, but harvests. There's going to be another harvest, a harvest of the wicked. It's a sickle. It's the grape harvest. <laughs> okay. Well, the grape harvest is symbolic of when God puts a sickle in and destroys the wicked. Okay, where it gets the blood stain on all his garments. I think I, Isaiah 63, I think. I think it's Isaiah 63. Okay, John 11. 23 to 27, top of page 5. Yeshua said to her, now remember when, when Lazarus had died? And Yeshua hadn't come there right away? Okay, and he goes there, and Yeshua said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha, the, the sister of Lazarus, said to him, I know that he will rise again at the resurrection on, uh, at the last day. <laughs> Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. The resurrection and the life. Okay, so we believe in him, and that's what he says, I will raise him up on the last day. Okay. The beginning of the last day is on a Rosh Hashanah. Okay, the beginning. Romans 6, <coughs> 3 to 11. Or do you not know that as many of us as been baptized into Messiah Yeshua were baptized into his death? Therefore we, are, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Messiah was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that our body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer live as slaves to sin. But he who has died has been freed from sin. But if we die with Messiah, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Messiah has been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over us. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he gives, he lives to God. 
Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God and Messiah Yeshua, our Lord. Okay. Philippians 3, 10 and 11. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Our whole purpose is to know him and the power of his resurrection. It's already in us. It's just, you know what? The light hasn't shined yet. The more we empty ourselves of this flesh and live by the Spirit, the more glory, it, the more it will rise up in us. It's up to us. Amen. The rest of the dead did not live again till the thousand years was finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who is part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. For they shall be priests of God and of Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. We will reign and rule with him. This is the first resurrection. It's the first. It's the harvest. Okay. Uh, that's all about the first fruits. Okay, so I wanted you to see. I'm not going to go over everything here because we're getting close to time here. The bigger read, the first group believers in the first section were covered on what I just read above. There's two witnesses that have a resurrection. Now we find out that in Revelation 7, 144,000 men, that's what it says in the Bible, they're, they're not the Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? Just let you know that. Okay. Uh, 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe, so probably people scattered all over the world from the 12 tribes of Israel, God knows who they are. They're believing men who have not had relations with women, and they get they get sealed in Revelation 7, and it doesn't say anything about them dying. <laughs> they get sealed in Revelation 7, and in Revelation 14, they're in heaven. It says nothing about them dying. So they get resurrected. So you see all these multitudes of resurrections here? They're all connected to one resurrection. They're all connected to one harvest, okay? The dead and Messiah believers and those still alive among the remaining living believers, Jew and non-Jew. So there's multitudes here. But I, I, so many people get confused over this because they don't understand the concept of harvest. This is all harvest, the harvest of God. We are the bride. We are the harvest of God as well. All the souls that have been won to him. Among the nations, among the kingdoms. It says that no one can count. After it seems 144,000 in Revelation 7, it talks about multitudes of nations, of peoples that have been saved. Okay, but all of them count as a complete harvest of the year. The harvest of the year is a type of shadow of the whole harvest of all time. The harvest of souls that began with the first fruits of Yeshua and ends with the resurrection of the dead and also those of us who are still alive. Okay, so going to the bottom of page six. What is the glory? The Hebrew word for glory is kavod. And its root word is kavod. It means a heavy weight. Glorious, heavy weight. <coughs> the weight of his glory, it carries a weight on it. Okay, that's, that's the power of God upon our lives. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 here. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory, just as is by the Spirit of the Lord. Do you hear what it's saying here? It's saying, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, right? But we are all, who are, who, that's us, right? With an unveiled face. We are looking in a mirror, seeing ourselves, and we see the glory of the Lord. But we're being transformed from glory to glory. In other words, ever increasing glory. Amen. Okay, just as this is the spirit of the Lord. Okay. Isaiah 26, 19 to 21. Your dead will live together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing, you who dwell on the dust, for your dew is like the dew of herbs, and the earth will cast out the dead. 
Come, my people, enter your chambers. Shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the wrath or the indignation is passed. For behold, Jehovah comes out of this place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will disclose her blood and will no longer cover her slain. So it's telling you the resurrection occurs and then the, the wrath occurs right after that. So is there time for us to have a left behind? I don't think so. It says right there, right immediately after the dead rising, come my people out to your chambers so I can pour out my wrath upon the earth. There's no time in there for, for us to have a seven year period of left behind. Sorry for all those people who, who, uh, who saw that movie. I mean, sorry for all those people who saw the movie. But sorry for those people who believe that who believe that we, you know, we can just do whatever we want and the Lord's gonna come and get us. And, and, and the books, and the books, oh my gosh, there were so many books that Tim LaHaye wrote. Yeah, there were at least 14 I read about. Yeah, well, I don't really want to name names, okay, but the, there's people that are just caught up in, in lies. So if they were to study for themselves, they would find out what, they, what their teaching was not correct. I already did Isaiah 61 to 5. Daniel 12. We're almost done. At that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, top of page 8. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since it was a nation even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered all who is found written in the book. Okay. And, and this is after the, the great tribulation. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. Now pay attention. Remember Isaiah 60. Those who are wise, that means they know the scriptures, they know the times, shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. That's the glory. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. You guys are going to shine. I'm telling you. Ever increasing glory is coming to your life. Amen. Even now. Yes. There'll be an increase if you will submit to it, if you will yield to it, mm -hmm. if you will not fight and play religion, mm -hmm. that there is that spirit of the Lord is inside of you, is right. that, waiting for the revealing, waiting for the coming out. Look, look at the next verse, Romans 8, 18 to 25. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation itself eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of the corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting the adoption, the redemption of our body, the resurrected body. For we are saved, we're saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. But why does one still hope for what he sees? For if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. The glory is what we're looking for. Ever increasing glory in us. People are going to be drawn to it. But even before we get the glory from above, the, the new body of glory, we are going to be in glory. It's going to increase until finally we will attain to the resurrection of the dead, to the change, the transformation. It's coming and we will go into a higher glory, the glory to glory. That's what we're waiting for, so that we can reflect his light to the fullest for the earth in darkness. We can shine his light. That's what he wants. Um, First Corinthians 15, 35, bottom page eight. For someone will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? Foolish one. <laughs> I want an answer. Okay. What, what you sow is not made alive until it, unless it dies. 
And what you sow, you do not sow that body that will be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat, or some other grain. But God gives it a body uh, as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. There is a flesh of man, another flesh of animals, another of fish, another of birds. There are celestial bodies, terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. <laughs> it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown as a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterwards the spiritual. The first was of the earth, a man of dust, Adam, remember? The second man is the Lord from heaven. Amen! As Hallelujah. was the man of dust, so also those who are made of dust. As is the heavenly man, so are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so we shall bear the image of the heavenly man. Think about that. Now this... I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. 2 Corinthians 3. But of the ministry of death written and engraved in stones was glory, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. Now, do you remember when Moses came down from the mountain the second time? It was on Yom Kippur. Okay. He came down and he was glowing. He yeah. had to put a veil over his face because it was fading away and he didn't want the people to see the glory fades away. Okay, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? But the ministry of condemnation had glory. The ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. We will most likely imitate the pattern of Yeshua. When the resurrection occurs, the dead believers of Messiah will rise, and those who are still alive and haven't been killed or the living believers will be changed into a glorified body and we will go out to take our part in bringing in the final harvest to souls. And this may be prior to meeting the Lord in the air and prior to the wedding. Then again, it may not. We may go to the wedding and come back to bring in the harvest. There's a lot of unknowns, okay? All right, but we, we know one thing, that we're going from glory to glory. Amen. And we have details of this given to us. And we need to be ready. We need to be open. We can't limit ourselves because of our religion and our understanding. This is where we have to have belonging. And I go back to Romans 8. I'm not going to read it again. We got to eagerly yearn and wait. But eagerness, hunger, thirst, desperation, wanting more so that the glory shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter in us. Because we are living for him. To live as Messiah, to die as gain. Amen. Our goal is to live for him. Amen. 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 And maybe a Lord. I want to live for you. Abba, we want to live for you. Abba, we want to experience your glory. We want to be lit up with your glory. Abba, we live in our frailties and our failures. Lord, you are cleansing your bride, uh, but that we may shine, that we may glow in your glory. You, we are your bride, and we long to be with our group. And we want to shine on the earth and be a witness for you, Lord. Shine through us, and we may be a witness for you, Lord. And everything that we do, Lord, we do it unto you. We do it for you. Uh, but let us never settle for religion. Let us never settle for cultists. Let us never, let us never settle for lukewarmness, Abba. We only want the fire. Increase your fire. Increase your glory upon us. The weight of your glory, Lord. Touch every soul in here. Touch all of that are listening. 
Uh, but let us be changed. Let us be transformed from glory to glory. Let us look at the mirror. That's the key to being transformed, Lord. That means we can look at the mirror and see what needs to change and make the change out of what we need to change in us so that we can allow the glory to flow, to be there, Abba, to shine through us. Abba, so that people will be drawn to us, but they will be drawn to us and be drawn to you in us. In the name of Yeshua. Yehovah, Yehovah bless you and keep you. May he lift his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his face, that means his glory face, to give you glory. Lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Sar Shalom, our Pits of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. You are rising, Lord. Your people are rising. Lord, let us shine in this darkness. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And Vishana Tovah. Vishana Tovah. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 5781? Not exactly the right year, but we'll, we'll work with that. Okay. And, and 2020. Shalom.